second part of this unit is classifying reactions based on what type they are. So the first type of reaction we're going to learn is redox reaction, which is really a blanket term um, for a whole bunch of different reactions. Um, so in a redox reaction, you can tell that something is redox because it is when atoms or ions gain or lose electrons. So redox comes from reduction, oxidation. So some of you really like watching like chemistry tutoring videos. If you hear someone refer to a oxidation reduction reaction or re reduction oxidation reaction, that's the same thing. That's what redox means. You can tell that something will count as a redox reaction because it always has a single element on either the reactants or the product side. So remember that from our periodic tables, um, we've been labeling oxidation numbers all year long. We refer to those as their charges. This comes from the number of electrons either gained or lost by an atom. If you gain electrons, you end up with a negative charge, and if you lose electrons, you end up with a positive charge. When you have a transition metal, so this says look at the periodic table to find the oxidation number of elements with predictable charges. Those are all of the elements that we label oxidation numbers for. So on our periodic tables, the elements that you're able to label oxidation numbers for are group 1, group 2, group 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, and then group 18 doesn't have oxidation numbers because they don't gain or lose electrons. We skip over our transition metals. These are the ones that we need Roman numerals for. So we need to find their oxidation numbers from basically undoing the crisscrossing process. The other two exceptions to that are tin and lead. These two we treat as though they are transition metals, so they're in group 14, which we have said has a plus 4 charge or a minus 4 charge but really these two have an unknown charge, so they need Roman numerals as well. So that's what this little part is talking about. You'll have to calculate the oxidation number of transitional elements because they can have more than one oxidation number. Free elements, meaning just an element exactly how it is on the periodic table, if it shows up in a reaction, has an oxidation number of zero, and the sum of the oxidation numbers in a compound also equals zero, meaning there are no charges in your compounds. There are four types of redox reactions that we'll talk about. The first one is called a synthesis reaction. Synthesis means to make something. So if you synthesize something, you have made it. The opposite of a synthesis reaction is called a decomposition reaction. So like to decompose means to break apart. D-E-C-O-M-P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. Decomposition means to break apart. The third type of reaction is usually people's favorite. This one is called a combustion reaction. So combustion means to burn, but really what it ends up talking about in terms of a reaction is to combine with oxygen. So combustion is really when we're burning stuff. To burn. I'm going to say to burn just to be consistent. To burn. And then the fourth type of redox reaction that we talk about is called single replacement. That just is when you swap, or to swap. So someone comes in and gets replaced. So all four of these types of reactions are considered redox reactions because in all four of these types of reactions, there is a single element somewhere in there. So redox, 
includes all four types of these. All include single element. So somewhere either on the reactant side or the product side there will be a single element here. So our redox type 1 is a synthesis reaction and a synthesis reaction will form a single product from two or more reactants. So for example, if I have element A reacting with element B, they would come together to form a single product of element or compound. A, B. So having just one thing on your product side, not multiple things added together, but one thing, tells you that it is a synthesis reaction. one, if I wanted to be specific about my compounds, remember that there were certain compounds or certain um, elements, sorry, that we talked about that we called diatomic. Diatomic meaning they exist in pairs in nature so that when they show up in your reaction as just the single element, we don't just write the element symbol, but we put a subscript of two on them because there are two of them bonded together. So in this particle diagram, if I have these two bonded together, this bonded together, that bonded together, that bonded together, because you can tell it's the same element, they're both black filled in squares, this would actually be diatomic B2. That doesn't necessarily mean that this would be B2, that all comes into play with balancing, um, but just get used to seeing particle diagrams because they'll be relevant later on. And then as a reminder of what our diatomic elements are, do you know what they are? Brinkelhoff, okay. So diatomic. You do have this written on your periodic tables, so if you have that out in front of you like you should, you probably have them listed. So these are all listed in pairs. This is our Brinkelhoff elements. So Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2O2, and F2. All of those elements are diatomic, which means that when they are, we'll say, single elements, when they're on their own, when they're not part of a compound, they will have a subscript of two. When they're part of a compound, they don't need to be diatomic because that um, compound is what's taking care of how many there are. So, for example, chlorine is on my list of diatomic elements, which means that when I have chlorine in my reaction, it's going to be Cl2 and not just Cl. But potassium is not diatomic, so you don't give it a subscript of two. But then when they combine together, when you put potassium and chlorine together, the way that this compound was formed was by taking potassium and its oxidation number of plus one and chlorine and its oxidation number of minus one and remember that you crisscross those so you get KCl as your formula for potassium chloride so you don't need a subscript of two on that. So these could be potentially the elements that we have here. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that this is considered a redox reaction because you have a single element or a single element, either one of these, diatomics, they still count as a single element when it comes to redox. Um, so it's both a redox reaction and a synthesis reaction. So the redox is kind of like the umbrella term. So the fact that there is a single element tells you that you would classify it as synthesis, or sorry, as um, redox. So in this example, single element tells me I'd classify it as redox. The fact that I made a single product tells me I'd classify it as synthesis. And then like we just pointed out, it's not actually balanced. So I would balance this the exact same way that I balanced my previous ones. I'll list potassium and I'll list chlorine. I have one potassium on my reactant side, two chlorines on my reactant side, and then one of each on my product side. I would use a coefficient of two in front of KCl. So two times one potassium gives me two potassiums, and two times one chlorine gives me two chlorines. And 
then I'd go back and put a coefficient of 2 in front of potassium on my reactive side. So 2 times 1 potassium. Once it's balanced, what goes in this blank? Perfect. And then we have an example here. Um, we'll do a demo at a different time when we have more time. But a magnesium strap, uh, sorry, a magnesium strip reacting with oxygen to form the combination of magnesium and oxygen. We call that magnesium oxide. So using your periodic tables, what is the formula for magnesium? Mg. Does it need a subscript? If it's just an element, the only time that it would need a subscript is if it's one of my diatomics that are listed here. So is magnesium on my list? No. So magnesium does not need a subscript. I would add that to oxygen. So reacts with means that it's added to oxygen. Does oxygen need a subscript? Yes, because it's one of my diatomic elements. When it's single, when it's by itself, it needs a subscript of two. So magnesium reacts with oxygen to form. To form means that's where the arrow goes. To form means this is my product now. To form magnesium oxide. So using what you know from nomenclature, we're combining magnesium as an element with oxygen as an element. So we follow the same process as this. Even though oxygen is diatomic, we just use their oxidation numbers to crisscross them. So magnesium has a plus 2 charge. Oxygen has a minus 2 charge. When you crisscross it, it becomes Mg2O2, but because this is an ionic compound, it came from making different ions, I will reduce that by 2, so both of the 2's reduce down to 1's, and we don't write the subscript of 1, so what is my actual formula for magnesium oxide? MgO. Perfect. So, because I have a single element and another single element, I know that this is classified as a as a redox reaction. So single element, single element, redox. And because I have a single product, just one thing that I made, what type of reaction do we classify this as? Synthesis. And then if we were to balance this, so here's a case where we don't have room for our RNP charts, we can make one out to the side. Reactants, products, Underneath that arrow, I'll list magnesium, and I'll list oxygen. I have one magnesium on my reactant side. I have two oxygens on my reactant side. One magnesium on my product side, one oxygen. So I need a coefficient in front of MgO of 2. 2 times 1 magnesium gives me 2 magnesiums. 2 times 1 oxygen gives me 2 oxygens. And then I come back and put a coefficient where? Perfect. A coefficient of 2 in front of magnesium changes that to 2, and then everybody is balanced. When you write it yourself and there's no blank, you don't always have to put the 1 there, but just know that if you were to recognize this on a test, it would be 2, 1, 2.